This is the Blockade Pinball Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Freebus, a.k.a. Shut Your Trap. Joining me as always, halfway across the world, is Jared Morgan. Hi, everyone. How are you going? All right. We're, we're back with a uh, regular show, Jared. A regular show. That's right. <laughs> yeah, I know. It feels weird going back to the regular format. The regular format. Yeah. So mm. uh, we've got this uh, regular format show, and then we've got a special episode coming up uh, the following week. Um, that's kind of timed with uh, with uh, a PAX. Is it is it an online event, Jared? It is an online event. Yeah. Oop, not that button. Let's try this button. There we go. Hi. That's me. <laughs> hey. Here you I know. am. Sometimes yeah. you got to know your yeah. hotkeys underneath without actually looking. Um, <laughs> hotkeys are hard. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you're right. It's good. It is PAX. It's an online uh, event, and um, I think it's like a a side event to the main PAX sort of. Um, thing that's going on so uh, you'll have to wait and see what wait and see but i mean it's no secret what we're going to be doing which is we're having a uh, let's play video and an interview at the same time with uh, uh rollers of the realm reunion uh going mm. on so uh it's it's kind of cool they they were like hey do you guys want to participate in this uh and do a live interview and we're like yeah okay yeah <laughs> yeah let's try it let's give it a go yeah, so it's uh, it was it was pretty fun, um, and that'll be coming out. Uh, I guess not next week, but the following week uh, after July tenth, I believe. Yeah, yeah. So that's something so to look good. forward to. Um, mm. And we've, of course, we've got stuff in the works over here that uh, we'll be taking care of. Uh, trying to think if there's anything going on real quickly uh just in general here before we get into actual pinball talk jared um what's, what's going on in your neck of the woods oh well i'm gearing up for bpac which is the um uh the big event that netherworld runs in conjunction with this massive pub called Brewdog um over here in brisbane we're gonna have oh, i think it's close to about 70 or 80 pinball machines nice and and a lot of video games. I don't know the final number of video games, but it's it's significant. Um, they're going to be having a Donkey Kong tournament there. They're going to be having, um, uh, I think, a couple of other side tournaments as well We're on the video game front. But on the pinball front, there's going to be a classics division. So everything 80s and or up to 80s and, and sort of very early 90s um, before they go into DMDs. And there's going to be like, you know, um, classic DMDs and modern Sterns. It's going to be a massive selection of games, including two Gottlieb System 80s, which are going to be there um, from me. I'm donating uh, Pink Panther and Force 2 for people to smash away on there. <laughs> I like how you say you're donating them uh, when really you're just, you know, you're showing off, buddy. <laughs> well, I'm totally showing off. I'm showing and shining. Like, that's what it is. This is it's show and shine like you do with cars. Exactly. And, and it's exactly it's exactly what, what um everyone who's donating a machine is doing they're going look i'm giving it over and look we get a free entry into one of the events um so every machine you donate you get a free entry to something so that's that's kind of nice that you know they're giving back to the the people who donate the games right um but yeah it's totally because i want a I, I want people to see these games because down here in australia i think there might only be one other owner who has them in their private collection um, and certainly there's none out on location anywhere that I'm aware of. So this will probably be the first time that anyone has ever played these, certainly in Brisbane, perhaps in Australia. Um, so that's pretty exciting. Um, but yeah, there's all sorts of other games there as well. They've got Normally there's a couple of really, really nice full restorations there. I think they had a, um, what was it? They had a Black Knight 2000 that was like, you know, complete playfield swap. Looks like brand new plastics, brand new um, LCD displays. This thing was mint as. It looked like it straight out of the box. And uh, it was incredible to play. So, um, yeah, you, you often get these little surprises. And the funny thing is, though, that this made me, this is the thing that made me change the way I do restorations. Like, I was, I was striving for, like, perfection and having everything perfect. But there was a couple of games last year that presented very much as player's condition. But when you played them, it's like, well, who cares? They're still fun yeah. to play. As, yeah, as you, don't, you don't have a lot down. of time to go, wait a second, that paint line isn't completely straight. You're just exactly. concentrating on the ball flying around. <laughs> and yeah, so long as exactly the ball rolls right. smooth, 
you really don't care. <laughs> and the and the mechanicals are strong. Yeah. And it's like, well, this play is fun. So yeah. who cares what it looks like? It's yeah. got a bit of it's got a bit of bark off the play field, as they say. Who cares, right? Yep. You yep. know. And that's exactly how it is. So I mean, I still do I still think I've done a pretty good job on both these machines, but like as far as you know, obsessing over it like I did with Star Race, it definitely wasn't to that level this time around. Yeah. So it it, it just kind of reminds me of there's a uh there's a YouTube uh, YouTuber that I <laughs> I found myself watching, even though I have no concerns about what's really going on in his videos. Uh, I know his name is Mateus. I don't remember what his channel is. But basically, he mm. likes to take uh, pianos and do funky things with them, like replace all the strings with guitar strings or oh, right. uh, replace all the hammers with actual hammers. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and it creates these really rather unique sounds and then what he'll do is he'll um call an unsuspecting piano tech to come visit him and go my piano sounds really funny can you diagnose <laughs> just to have a laugh with him. and he and he lives in sweden and so it's like it's not it's not like you know these piano techs are uh local so he starts feeling bad if he's made him drive two hours to come and visit him and stuff but yeah. the end result a lot of the times is they get a good chuckle out of it because yeah. They're just kind of like, you know what? It's good to see somebody actually having fun with these things. Yeah. Um, and and giving us something, you know, different to look at uh and, and a different sound altogether to the point that he actually had a software company ask him to record all of these things and then they imported the sound into their digital piano as one of the filters that you could put on. I mean, it, Oh, they actually made it a uh, a profile. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. So I just kind of think about that with, with pinball and uh, going and playing it and, where it's just like, hey, you know what? So long as it rolls, it doesn't matter what it looks like. <laughs> no. So, as anyway. long as you can play it and it flips. Yeah. That doesn't matter. Exactly right. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to people being able to play these two. Cool. And, you know, thankfully, because I've done my done the hard work this time around, not that I didn't do hard work on Star Race, but, you know, yep. I replaced literally every circuit board that could be replaced in the game. Um, so I very much doubt I'm going to have the same downtime issues that I had with Star Race this time right. around. Yeah, so I think they're going to last the are last you, two weeks. Are you, are you going to be open for offers? Um, I may be open for offers. You got to be. Uh, you got to be open for trade. I for this trade up in what, the world. That's what I'm open to. I mean, these games, like, I, I never am shy about saying this, they don't owe me much change from five and a half grand Australian. Yeah. So that includes purchase price of the original machine plus all the stuff I put in them. Like their 555 five, five would, I think, just cover costs. So, you know, if I could get 65 for one of these, I might look at selling. Or if we could swap for maybe in like an early solid state that's in good condition. Yeah, you know. I'll well, that's that. that's what I'm thinking is that you know, like you said, these two machines that you have aren't exactly uh, readily available in Australia. <laughs> they are not common. No, no. And so that's what you play up is to They're one scarcity. of these collectors that would really like one and then would possibly want to really dive in and do a a, a proper restoration on them, where you've already done at least the board work, so now it becomes the aesthetics that they would need to uh, uh, really go nitty-gritty on. I mean, I know you yeah. did your, your job on it and stuff, but... Um, no, but that's yeah, where If they want to, like, like, you know, two-pack two pack clear coat and get a professional playfield restorer to go over it with a yeah, fine-tooth coat. Yeah, um, you know, So there's where it's like, hey, I'll trade you my hard-to-find item that you wouldn't normally find in Australia for maybe your... Uh, better upkept, but uh, rather easier to get. You know, Williams machine. <laughs> mm, that's right. Like a, like a sort of like a mid mid era solid state. You know, something with an alphanumeric display, for example. You know, I'd settle on one of those. That's where I'd just be um, like, "What's that? You you want to give me your centaur? Oh, okay. <laughs> oh yeah, shut up and take my money. That's right. <laughs> yeah, well, that's that's funny because like a centaur is. It's kind of the same as the ones I've got in that it's a single level play field. There's mm -hmm. no ramps, there's no modes and all that, but it's just a really nice machine. Yeah. So yeah, yeah I get what you're saying. Like I'd, I'd swap around. I would definitely swap one for another and, you know, 
I'm open to ideas. So if you're reading this and you're going, because some people are over in the States and they will be actually traveling over for this, whether they listen to our show or not. But yes, I am open to offers if you want to. Um, let's let's talk trading uh, on these <laughs> ones. Yeah. All right. Um, so we're going to dive right into our uh, to our main piece, which is mm. playing taps. Digital pan fell fans is uh, about to go bye bye, folks. Um, by the time yeah, you watch right. this, it very well might. Uh, once July rolls around, it's gone. Um, gone. Yeah. Uh, so basically, what is going on here? Uh, Gord Lacey, he's the one that uh, founded the the forum, put it up there. He's been financing this thing all these years, and uh, it initially started mm. off as uh, pinball arcade fans, and then wisely. Divestive uh, or diversified out of that into just digital pinball fans. Uh, Gord saw the writing on the wall, same as we did. Um, yeah, and uh, you know that's why it's now digital pinball fans instead of uh, the pinball or pinball arcade fans. But uh, you know, for a while there, it was a very thriving forum. Lots of discussion oh, was... going on. It was incredibly vibrant. Yeah, it was game. great. It was a load of laughs. But since then, yeah. um, it's kind of fallen off the face of the earth. <laughs> the, the user uh, engagement is rather slim. And part of that is because a lot of that user engagement has moved over into Twitter, into Discord, into Reddit, um, you know, all these things. And, and just the the form of that nature in general. Uh, again, this started up in 2012, so 10 years ago. Yeah. The internet has changed since then. <laughs> it has evolved in a decade. Yeah. And it's people are looking for that they, they don't really want to participate in forum stream style um uh interactions anymore. They want to have that chat style um interaction with people in in almost real time. And yeah. you know, you could argue that, well, forums give you that if there's like a high volume of people writing, but at the same time you know, you can get the same feeling as a forum just by threading conversations yep. on Discord. Exactly. You know. Like I said, and, it's, it's, we're in a different era since when that started. But I thought that today, since it's going away, um, we might get a little bit of a, a, a eulogy to <laughs> to it. Just, we're going to reminisce a bit. Um, because, quite honestly, without that forum that Gord created, there would be no blockade. Um, no, Chris and I would never have met if it wasn't for that forum. No, nope. uh, quite honestly, Zen wouldn't have the connection that they do with the audience that they do now without that forum. Correct. Um, that's not to say that digital pinball wouldn't have risen like it has been. No. But I think the, in a lot of ways, I think, I think we were all part of the same uh, whirlpool of activity and everything fed itself and, and made it all grow uh, in a nice organic way. Uh, yeah. And and since then, it's all diversified and shot off in different directions. But without yeah. that central thing, uh, I don't think a lot of this would be how we know it today. And so for that, we all owe Gord just heaps a lot. and heaps of praise yep. and uh, acknowledgement. Um, Gord is on Twitter. Uh, I believe it's at Gord Lacey. Uh, yep. Go over there, fire him off a big old thank you. Um, just give him some love. Uh, that being yep. said, he is open to keeping the site open if you want to pay the fee. <laughs> yep. There is an ongoing cost to license the server and host it each month. Yeah. So if you really want it, um, you can pony up the cash and it can stay alive. Um, as far as archiving all the threads on it, um, forums tend to be quite um, a little bit like uh, there, there is some some history on that site, um, which you know we sort of in our shows now and again we quote from because um, you know a lot of the time we were participating in the posts that were discussing this particular the particular items of history. So that will probably go. Um, there might be internet uh, like Wayback Machine. Um, cuts of some of the posts because it's it's been up for a while it should be indexed but yeah it's um 
there's a lot of stuff that will go away when which is that goes i i just realized there's something that i definitely need to go in there and save um because i reference it now and then and that is the zen pinball designers uh thread uh all the tables that are yep. out there and which designers uh worked on which table yep that needs to be get put somewhere else yeah. Um, if it's not already put somewhere else. Uh, something else that got pointed out to me that I went, what? And then I listened and I went, what? Um, I didn't even know this, Jared. I don't think either of you have these saved, but our all of our podcasts are linked via Mediafire there. Oh, um, the old ones. The old, like episode one, the pilot is there. <laughs> oh, wow. The, oh, that's right. Because I'm um, a friend of the show, Jeff Strong. Um, who uh, used to um, always participate in those shows. He did a lot of the, the post-production mm-hmm. on the episodes initially. And yeah, he was using Mediafire and just dumping them up there as a as a, a, a thing. Well, yeah. we should definitely... I think we need those. to go grab those um, because I listened to the pilot episode and <laughs> it was... Crazy. It was cringe, mm. but there was definitely the seeds of what you all know today. Um, Jared mm. doesn't sound like anything like Jared sounds now. Um, I was using a very crappy headset mic that was, I mean, it was like a single little bar that went in front of my mouth. Um, I that, think we all were using a variation of headset mics. <laughs> I think I was probably using like my Life Chat 3000 headset, yeah. you know, which I was using for office stuff at the time. Well, know, the funny I mean, thing too is everybody was like, but your mic sounds so good. And I'm like, that's because it's like practically in my mouth. Literally, um, right, I'm <laughs> eating it like, ah, in my mouth. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I then went and listened to uh, the infamous episode three where we did... <laughs> I did a quiz at the end, and unfortunately, Jared had left the podcast by that time. He had someplace to go. Um, and this is when we were having like six, seven people in the podcast at the same time. <laughs> it was utter chaos when yes. we had that many uh, people. And that's actually the name of the episode is Utter Chaos. Utter Chaos, um, yeah. And there was a quiz where I was giving, because uh, there was a speculation thread on the forum of what tables did we think might be coming out in Pinball Arcade. And so I was uh, taking the names of pinball machines and doing, like, I was like, oh, there's an image of a rock and a spark. What table would that be? And the answer was Flintstones, because sparking rock. Um, right. And I was getting much groans, and everybody was just like, oh, that's terrible. And then I was, there was, <laughs> <laughs> there was an individual that was infamous on our forums named Heretic, uh, oh, who was yes. an Irishman who always said he would come on the show, would find every excuse under the sun not to show up and uh, be on there because he didn't want to hear his voice. And so I started doing a very terrible Irish accent, (laughs) imitating him. It was, it was, I mean, it's like, I listen to it now and I'm like, boy, that barely sounds any different than me. Um, (laughs) It really did it, but anyhow. In my head, it sounded a lot different. Um, But his, the joke was, Every single one of his answers was, oh, it's Adam's family. Yeah, I remember that episode. (laughs) Until the very last one where I gave, it was like, the clue is it's uh, the Paramount Mountain and Bobby King, who was the uh, president of Farsight, Farsight um, is planting a flag on the top of it because that was there. We got to get Adam's family. And so I said, so Heretic, what game is that? And he goes, Safe Cracker. (laughs) <laughs> and I totally forgot about that, and I just started laughing. I was like, "That's too funny." Um, yeah, there there was shenanigans, and boy, did we ever put a lot of effort into post production back then. Like there were like I remember having to do some of those shows where like we used to do a bump in and bump out track. Well, that was that was that segment. was all Jeff. That was all. That was Jeff. all Jeff, and I took it over, and then I went, "No, this is way too much work. I can't do this." <laughs> <laughs> and then I just stamped it out. But then we, you know, we started to evolve and, and move into more video based. Yeah, once um, we got into video, it was kind of there wasn't a need for the the audio effects because no. otherwise we'd have to do video effects. We're not doing those. That's right. Oh, you know, we don't we don't have a um, steam dip, um, so we can't like drop drops in. Yeah. Um, easily. <laughs> uh, I remember us joking that you know someone should like give us more money so we can actually buy us a, a stream deck. Yeah. Um, but uh, no one ever did. Some people no. are really kind, and they nobody, do give us a few bucks here and there. Yeah, nobody but. nobody ever bothered uh, designing our logo for us. They made me do no. that. Um, yeah. 
nobody bothered giving us a Steam Deck, nobody uh, or Stream Deck. Um, I don't know. We now and then ask for things, and nobody ever gave it to us. <laughs> no, don't um, do that. All right, that's that's us though. That's our history. Which, interestingly enough, I'm realizing, uh, come November, we celebrate our 10 year anniversary. 10 years doing this. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Talking about stuff and things. Stuff and things. So, <laughs> what I do want to do. Uh, I want to just talk about, uh, personally, you and I, how this forum affected us, uh, how we both discovered it, um, and then we'll kind of reminisce about uh, some of the things that, uh, the good and the bad of digital pinball fans. Um, I don't know which of us got on the forum first. Do you happen to remember? I don't recall. Um, in fact, I'm even having a hard time recalling how I discovered the forum. I think I was just doing a a random Google search. That is exactly for... how mine went. Uh, so yeah. the Pinball Arcade got announced sometime, I want to say, in <sighs> late 2011, like November of 2011 hmm. or so. Um, and It was before Christmas, that's for it sure. It was before Christmas. The yeah. game released on iPhone, I believe, on iOS in December of that year. And then came, I discovered the game in February of 2012. Started Google searching because there was the four tables that it came with, mm. <laughs> which were Black Hole, um, Medieval Mad... No, it was Black Hole. What was the Stern table? Um, was it uh, Was it Ripley's? It's Ripley's. It was Ripley's. Uh, Theater of Magic. Yep. And, because that was the Bally machine, what was the Williams machine? Oh, I can't recall. It's going to eat me up now, but I can't remember it. It is. It's going to totally eat me up. And it wasn't brought a pinball because no, that because was that was the was that the first or second, second pack? Second pack. I Bride think. Yeah. came with medieval madness. Yeah, it was quite the killer pack. That was quite the killer pack, <laughs> and I spent <laughs> so much time playing those two tables. Ridiculous yep. amount of time playing those two tables. Um, yeah. So that was in February that I got it on the PS3, and I started doing a Google search, trying to find out more about Pinball Arcade. And, that's and lo and where behold, Pinball Arcade fans. fans. Yep. So and then yeah, I nice beca- SEO there, Gord. And, uh, <laughs> and I became a member of it in March of 2012. Yes, I, I could, I would have to quickly scramble and load up the site and try and log into it to see when I was a member. But um, I think it was definitely the same year, and it probably would have been when Pinball Arcade came out on android that i would have got interested because Mm -hmm. that was the platform i had um didn't really have a pc platform back then Mm. for for ages i was an android and which i discovered listening to that first podcast (laughs) Mm. because jared had a special section just for him in the podcast called android talk yeah. <laughs> Cuz he couldn't relate to the console talk or well it wasn't even out on PC at that time. No, that's right. It was just console. It was yeah. just console and mobile. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Um but clearly you were in it pretty quick. You were in the forum pretty quickly. Um, I got on pretty as soon as I went, "Oh, there's a forum where I can talk with other pinball nerds about pinball." Yes, I'm yeah. in for that. Um, yes, sign me up. <laughs> the strange thing is when I joined into it, it was already thriving. I mean, there was a yeah. lot of threads, a um, lot of categories. Um, it was exciting to talk about because it was just like so much that could come into the pipe, so much speculation. Um, and right. there was two tables coming out every month. Uh, I mean, it was just like the minute you started playing, there was already you know more coming along the way. Um, and it was already so much better than what uh, Toten wasn't one of the tables, was it? I think that was the Williams table. Oh, yeah. It was oh, Tales of the Arabian Nights. Was it Tales of the Arabian Nights, yeah. the first launch? Yes. Yeah, that yeah, actually it is right. It was. It was. Um, yeah. And, I mean, what a killer opener. Uh, that, yeah, it was right? fantastic. I mean, again, we, if that's what your opener is, 
that just set the bar for excitement of oh my yeah gosh, there's so much that could be awesome um it's like one's there's modern williams in these like it's not just you know old got leaves well and to now, anybody to that you... had the williams hall of fame or the gottlieb hall of fame that farsight had put out previously there was already a marked improvement um mm. with how the games played uh and that was a marked improvement over any previous digital version that had been available of those of those games. Um, just visually, it looked so much better, and the physics were better. Uh, and the only other thing that you could compare it to was at that same time, Zen was out on the consoles with uh, both of Zen Pinball and just Pinball FX One, uh, I believe. Uh, and the knock on Zen back then was, well, we don't have any nostalgia towards these tables, but boy, do the memories flood come flooding in when you see a Williams or a Valley table pop in. Oh, yeah. And so that now, was... To what... answer your question, I joined on, if this is um, regular date, the 5th of August, 2012, unless it's US date, which would be the 8th of um, May, I think you would have been 8th of May. There's no way that you were... I think it's 8th of May. Yeah, yeah, there's no way that you were in August because our first recording was... Uh, well, we were already doing chat room by that point. Yeah, that's right. Big we had an IRC room up. Yes. So yeah. So that's what, what I think that's what we're next going to kind of uh, dive into. We, A group of us were on the forum. Okay, it seemed like daily. Uh, oh, yeah. Just having a good old time ripping back and forth. Um Jeff was a moderator already and was wielding the band hammer along with uh, Sean Dos Carlos. Oh, yes. Um, and Gord. And the band hammer was essential because things were getting toxic real fast. Really were. At one point, it was, it was not an easy place to be sometimes. There were a lot of trolls oh, on the forum. And I mean, vicious trolls. <laughs> Hor horrible trolls shredding yeah. into people um and but you started seeing these regular players and so the regular players were again myself jared um jeff uh, narcolepsy time lord bill um uh sean there was this guy named skillshot and then heretic and they were basically the two drunken idiots um Trying to think if there's any other. I mean, a lot of them wound up on our initial uh, podcasts. Um, uh, Xenia was back in the day. He was labeled yeah. something else. I forget what his username was back then. Um, but uh, what we realized was a lot of the reasons why people were getting banned <laughs> was because they were going off topic in threads. Yes. And we all were. said, you know what? We need a place that we can talk off topic <laughs> yeah and just right. rip roar and this is where i know that jared you came into prominence in my head was because of the iarc chat channel yeah because you seem to have it permanently open <laughs> i yeah i did it was it was always open anyone could join in jump in uh and then if they were being idiots i'd just kick ban them and so um, and that channel which was fun <laughs> <clears throat> That channel, in a lot of ways, it wasn't easy to get into. No. But it's kind of what Discord is today. It, it actually is what Discord is. Um, it was, it's actually IRC, for those who don't know what this is, it's called Internet Relay Chat. Um, and at the time, I was working for an open source company, Red Hat, and we used it all the time. So I thought, well, heck, let, why don't we just use this? And I was on Freenode, which was like a gaming, a gaming server. Um, and, uh, yeah, I, I just set it up on a whim to see if anyone wanted to come in. And surprisingly people made the effort to jump in mm -hmm. and it was great because you got to real time chat and just shoot the breeze. Um, and we talked about everything but pinball. It seemed. Oh, it wasn't <laughs> pinball related. No. In fact, people came in and were trying to talk pinball and we often stopped <laughs> doing that and just talked about rubbish. We, so, we, we often opened up a second channel. Just so that we could rip on the person <laughs> that was trying to talk about pinball. Yeah, we yeah we really did. It was terrible. Um, <laughs> we, we were bad people. We yeah, yeah we were not kind. Um, no. 
<laughs> there was a lot of mean girls going on there. Um, oh, there really was, yeah. We were bitches. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we also had, I don't remember if, I don't think I don't think Farsight was popping in at that time yet either. Um, no, they they weren't. But when we let them know on the forum, well, they saw the thread um, about the um, the server, and they sort of started popping. These random people started popping in, and then they identified themselves as Farsight employees um, in the thread. And we went, "Oh, well, this is rad." <laughs> like we weren't expecting this to happen. Yeah, so they were they were vaguely aware of us and what wound up happening in the in that chat room uh which we affectionately called the barcade yes <laughs> affectionately because again more than a few people were inebriated while uh being in there mm -hmm. um and so it seemed appropriate but none of us realized that there was an actual place called the barcade uh back yes east. llc yes uh. um <laughs> And what typically wound up happening was I kind of always wound up being the the moderator of the chat, trying to bring people around because we started doing a little events inside there. Um, I know we've talked yeah, about we it did. here before. Uh, in five minutes and stuff like yeah. that. Five so, minute challenges. Yeah. And so then the idea became, because I just threw it out there. I went, you guys know that Farsight's only 90 minutes away from me. And then, and Jeff had recently moved uh, to California, to Southern California, and it was just haphazardly thrown out there. Oh, you guys, you guys should, you know, contact Farsight. Ha ha ha! And I was like, Yeah, I should do that. I should. Should I say, Hey, can we do an interview? Because I was just looking for an excuse to go visit them, and everyone was like, Hey, that's yeah, a really great idea. Games. That's a really great idea. And I went, Yo, what? <laughs> All right. And I and I, I just kind of jokingly went, Hey, if you guys can get me the contact information, I'll do it. Mm. And somebody got the contact information. So I was like, all right, I guess I have to do it. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go up there and do this interview, yeah. I guess. Yeah. So me and Jeff wound up going up there doing the interview. And that's where it really sealed the deal of them knowing who the heck we were. Um, and that opened up a really great line of communication. Um, and once that line of communication was open between them, that's then when they really started visiting the forum. And then Gord went one step beyond and basically gave them special uh, highlighted status in the threads so that everybody yeah. would know if they were an official <laughs> he blue check marked them before blue check marks were a thing <laughs> um <laughs> yeah totally did like there was a, a clear indicator on that say oh farsight employee yeah um so yeah it was and then farsight was really started using the site um as basically promotion. it was pimple arcades forum at that mm -hmm. point like they they weren't paying a cent for it, but nope. they were absolutely using and abusing it at that point. Yeah, for their own like for their own benefit, like which was... we the fans loved because it was hey look at this interaction that we're having. Um, yeah, the sad truth of it that when we look at it now was, boy, were they spitting a lot of BS. <laughs> oh, yeah, they really were. <laughs> they, uh, they were they were telling us what we wanted to hear, not what was actually happening, and that quickly became the catchphrase of that we all learned. To love and hate from Farsight, which is, yes, we would like to do that. Yeah, that's a great idea. That sounds like something we'd love to do. Yeah, that didn't mean that they were going to. It just meant that they would like to. <laughs> yeah, which was the the classic non-committal answer that uh, we all know and love. Yes, and hate. Um, yeah. uh, and they started doing the twelve days of Christmas there. Um, mm. which was a whole nother fiasco. <laughs> um, there was a lot of fiascos that, that wound up going on, but it yeah. did, I think, I think Jeff and I visited personally one other time because uh, we recorded an interview with Norman. Uh, Norman That's right. Norman was a great guy. Um, Norman Sapansky. Yeah. yeah. And, I, and I've contacted him okay, within the last year and said, hey, if you ever want to spill the beans on Farsight, and he goes, only when Farsight closes. <laughs> only when Farsight closes. And he goes, yeah. and then I'll have much to say. I just went, oh, <laughs> man. Um, and he still, he's, he still has too many. He lives near those people. So, um, yeah. Uh, but, uh, and then I went up there, I believe, twice more myself uh, on two yep. other occasions. Uh, to you got, you actually, one of the times you went up there, you actually got to play the never released Arcuda. 
cabinet. Well, that, that, that was there. the final time I went up there, and that was basically uh, to that was to get their side of losing the Zen license. Yeah. Um, and that was a dark time. <laughs> that was <laughs> well, really look, tough for them, but also quite hard for us as well. Yeah. Uh, it was... I'll put it to you this way. The first time that me and Jeff went up to Farsight, we had to sign in. There was a uh, receptionist at the front door, uh, you know, the little desk there. Yeah. Um, it was bustling with people. There was activity. Um, it was relatively quiet still, but yeah. um, that's the big... You know, I, I'd never visited where gaming programming goes on. I didn't realize everybody lived under headphones. Um, totally dude yeah. <laughs> yeah. and but there was a lot of people all over the place that last time I went no receptionist um, that area was looked like now it was just storage of stuff yep. uh, there was hardly anybody around cubicles were empty all over the place uh, there was no machines being torn apart in the work area as previously um, that time they did show me the garage where all their former games just sat folded up, uh, wrapped in plastic, which made me very sad. Um, yeah, mainly because they just literally ran out of floor space. They couldn't they couldn't fit five seasons of pinball machines on the floor there. No, and they had nowhere else to store them. Um, yeah, and they weren't going to sell them, so they just sat there. In I really hope they took the batteries out of those machines. <laughs> I'm sure they did, but here's the thing that you got to realize, too. This was up in the mountains where it snowed. Yeah. And yeah. their studio was essentially a very large house. <laughs> um, right. So it, when I say garage, it literally was a three-car garage um, with a metal roll-down door, concrete floor. That's where all those machines were just sitting. It was not climate-controlled. <laughs> so they would have frozen in the winter uh -huh. and cooked, cooked in, in the, the summer. summer. Oh. Yep. Um, really oh, the tragic. The amount of rust on those machines would be phenomenal. Really tragic. And I imagine that they're to this day sitting there still. Yeah, because Farsight had a policy that they wouldn't, they, they got bitten when they did the Gottlieb um, collections because they had to rebuy all the machines again. Oh, was the, no, it was the Williams collection. That's right. It's the Williams one. Yeah. Never to sell a machine again. No. Uh, but. It's probably time for them to think about doing that if they haven't already. But then again, they also they never really actually restored the machines, uh, which I learned. no they they took them in they took and them then apart they digitally retouched them. Yes, they did massive. Yeah, they retouching. did everything. If you ever saw what their genie playfield actually looked like, you would was wonder junk. where they got that image from. <laughs> which is why the infamous bones, not bonus, oh, yeah. um, was on the yes. playfield. Of that uh, game for ages because they literally had to redraw the art and they yeah. re <laughs> they misspelt the redrawing. I right, how can you do that anyhow? Yeah. Um, so there yeah. was a few years there where the forum was just cranking. Uh, yeah. Again, I mean, I look at I like, there have, was hundreds of posts a day, hundreds uh, of posts. I have like it was, over a, it was eight, actually a struggle to keep up. Yeah, I have over eight thousand posts there. Um, yeah, and I think I've got what is my post amount? It's something. Quite surprising, uh, four thousand three hundred thirty-three posts. Yeah, yeah, that's a lot of posts. It, it really is. And eventually, uh, well, eventually, me and Jared also got brought in as moderators. Um, mm. But by that time, the culture had been established, and yeah, we'd stamped out all the trolls. Yeah, other than yeah, Heretic, Heretic orders. was the one troll we allowed, um, just because yeah. we found him funny. And he never, he A, knew when to back off, and yeah. B, never got terribly personal. Um, no, and it was that's what of... we really had a problem with, when people started to attack Farslight employees Yes, um, and make personal attacks on other people. We went, nope, you're not doing that. That was a hard no yeah. um, from us as moderators. Yeah. And there are people to this day that probably still hate us for it because, yeah. you know, we we did clamp down pretty hard on some folks because they didn't respect the rules and they were being being um, toxic people and I'm pretty sure they still hate us today for it. Well, I remember and and again, so I mentioned earlier there was a guy by the name of Skillshot, and he got so belligerent 
and so out of line that he was even offending Heretic. <laughs> but that's something. And Heretic yeah. was not easily offended. No, and <laughs> uh, he wound up getting banned, at which point he then went on Facebook pages and started personally attacking members of whose Facebook oh, the moderation pages, team. Moderation team. Yeah. <clears throat> and sending letters to Gord and that were very threatening. <laughs> and that's yeah. when he got seriously perma banned. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, he was using aliases to try and re sign up as as himself. Yeah, so think about forum. that. And he wasn't the only one that was doing this. Think about that, folks. That's how popular this forum was. People were desperate to get back on it. Um, yeah. Gord had a waiting list until which was Easy to manage until, again, the spam bots started trying to sign up. Oh, yeah. Um, that was punishing for Gord. Yeah. That was, kind like, of the, that was kind of when the spam bots started going in. I think that was the, the beginning of the end for Gord, uh, mm. where he stopped caring <laughs> about the form of like, you know what? Yeah, you guys It's not worth the 25 bucks. It. And, <laughs> yeah, it's not, worth, it's not worth my time. I've got actual I've got people paying me money to do... I think he, like God was in web development, I think. Yes. Um, which is why he had servers lying around that he could just host things on. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it was like this. Uh, this is actually costing me money, not just hosting money, but my time that I could actually be using on client projects. So yeah, you guys look after it. So I would yeah, say yours. probably around 2016. Uh, I think that's when the name change came yeah. down well, because that would have coincided with Zen acquiring no um, that well that was 2018 but what we were starting to see was the writing oh, on the right. wall in terms of Farsight's not getting better with their product um, they're yeah. not making any improvements and they're kind of coasting on their laurels and the bugs are getting more and more severe um, some people seem to think that the forum was nothing but a place that ripped on Pinball Arcade that everybody hated on Pinball Arcade. That's not the case at all. And I, and I say that now having listened to just those first couple of, of episodes of our podcast where we were heaping praise on it. And Oh, we were. And because I, at the time, it was the only game in town. Oh, and it was just funny because uh, the PS4 had ju- version had just come out and Time Lord was just like, it looks unbelievable. Though, and the way the light is casting is amazing. And I'm just chuckling to myself now going, Boy, we were easily uh, amused back then, weren't we? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, uh, no, the right basically discussions were happening with Gord, where it was like, you know what, we might want to consider this no longer being about digital pin or about the pinball arcade, because at the same time, Pinball Effects Two was now out and thriving. And yeah. Zen was doing all sorts of interesting original tales. Again, I still was on the fence on Zen. I still had no personal connection, and the ball still was a leaden weight. Yeah, but there was a lot of people were talking about it. Yes, a and lot of discussion about Zen was actually really increasing a lot, and we were going, "Well, really, is it is it right to call it pinball arcade fans anymore?" When we're talking about Zachariah and mm-hmm. Magic Pixel doing their work, Zen, and there were even some like you know other smaller things. Like I think was that too early for Pinball Wicked? I yes. forget when they started developing, well, but we had yeah, that was too we, we started to see more of these like outliers coming in to do digital pinball as well, trying to like you know yeah. ride the coattails of Farsight with the, the popularity of pinball in general and digital pinball that, that was burgeoning um, in that decade. And not only that, but um, whole threads were popping up of, can you imagine if Zen did <laughs> Williamson Valley Machines? What yeah. If, what imagine. if Zen did what what Farsight is doing right now? How would that be different? Um, those discussions were popping up, um, yep. and that was kind of the start of. I know we started talking to, uh, Bob on Barbie, or Bob on Bobby Bobby Bob 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 Yeah, that's it. I'm like, yeah. what is it? Um, because Zen also had a form that looked very. It was the exact same forum look as what uh, Pinball Arcade fans was. Mm. Um, their forum just wasn't as lively, but Bobby was the community manager over there, and she was occasionally popping over 
onto ours. And again, I don't know if that was Gord reaching out to her or she'd reached out to him. But what transpired was all of a sudden there was a little bit of a link to and communication to Zen. And I yeah. know that Jared and I got then in communication with Bobby because I had switched over to PC by that time. Yeah. And we were, and I know that I had scooped up a whole bunch of, of Zen tables in a humble, humble bundle sale and some steam sales, but we had a lot of gaps. And so we communicated to Bobby and she was like, tell you what, I'll fill in all the gaps. Yeah. We went, what? Yeah. yeah, That was really, it was like, that was nice. (laughs) Yeah. It was, yeah. So she was like, like, wait, which tables are you missing? Okay, fine. Here's code for that. Here's code for that. Here's code for that. Now, boom. Now you're up to, now you're up to date. (laughs) It was Um, like, oh my God. (laughs) Yeah. That was, that was really cool. Um, Yeah. And so that was kind of, it was kind of this weird transition, but that was also when the thread started decreasing a little bit. Mm. Um, I know I wasn't on there so much. Um, we might have done too good a job moderating because a, the fun kind of disappeared <laughs> from from the forums. Yeah. None of us were using the uh, chat anymore. Uh, Jared and I were getting all of our chat out via this podcast. Um, yeah, it was kind of a weird mm. transition. And then one day, <laughs> I get a message from Gord, and he goes, I, I, I want to say he was like, he was like, hey, I don't want to put this over the forum. You need to come here. But, I, well, and... but you need to, I need to chat with you. He's like, do you have, uh, he's like, do, do you mind if I call you? Yeah. And I was like, oh, okay. okay. So I gave him my phone number, and he calls me. <laughs> And he goes, you're never going to believe who I just had a conversation with. I said, okay. And he goes, I just talked to Zen. I go, what do you mean? And he goes, well, this guy, Mel Kirk. He goes, I, I just I reached out to him just for the sake, or he reached out to me just, and we and we were talking, and he told me, they're getting the Williams license. And I just went, What? <laughs> Are you kidding me? And he goes, no. I go, spill. Give me all the dirt. And it was crazy. Uh Oh, I think I lost Jared. Uh Uh-oh, Jared just blue screened of death. Dun, dun, dun. Well, I'm going to tell the story anyway, and uh, maybe he'll uh, be able to uh, <laughs> come on back in. Uh, give me one second here, folks. I'm just going to uh, uh, tell him, come back. I'll, I'll talk until then. <laughs> this is what we don't do with the show live. Um, so yeah, he he uh, he proceeded to spill the beans on everything that uh, was about to happen, with with all, and I was floored, and but the end result was that J- Gord goes, "Do you want to talk to Mel? Do you want me to put you in contact with him?" And I was just like, "Absolutely, that needs to happen, <laughs> by all means." And so he gave me Mel's contact information and made contact. And that was when all of a sudden it was like, okay, we'll talk to you, but we got to send you some NDA forms. Uh, so those all came in the mail, signed all those, fired them back. And then the wealth of information we got, and it was so tricky because it was like desperately wanted to talk about it on the forum. Can't do it. Desperately wanted to talk about it in the podcast. Can't do it. Uh, Farsight's still releasing stuff, and I'm still in communication with Farsight. Can't say a word to them <laughs> about any of this stuff. I literally knew they lost the license before they knew that they lost the license. That's what's um, kind of kind of crazy to think about. That I well, I mean, I can't say that for certain that I know that uh, I knew that 
Farsight had lost the license before they knew, but it's possible that I did. Uh, Jared's back. Let me go ahead and... Uh, there he is. Hey, blue screen. Blue Don't know screen. why. <laughs> yeah. So I just, I, I, I just did the, the quick rundown of when we found out um, that we got to con- get in contact with Zen and uh, sign a whole bunch of that NDAs. Was a wild ride. That, that one, was that so was... insane. Um, yeah. And there's, again, there's where we have to absolutely praise Gord because without him I don't think we would have gotten that intro to Mel and Zen oh no Um, no way there's no way that relationship would have established itself and that has paid so many dividends not I mean obviously it's paid dividends to us uh, and and expanded what we do but again I think it's opened up such a line of communication um, just get information out of there and we had no idea that Farsight would drop off the planet um, and no. Zen would become the only game in town. Uh, that was not what our, you know, we thought that, oh, we're going to be talking to Zen, we're going to be talking to Farsight, we're going to be talking to Magic Pixel, this is going to be great. They could coexist, everyone could be happy. Yeah. You know? um, but no. <laughs> not to be. Um, now but Farsight is pretty, pretty much completely dried up. Um, they're... They're but not again, doing anything pinball related. Yeah, but again, by that point within the forum, uh, you know, when Pinball FX3 came out, yeah, traffic picked up again on the forum, but it never got to the levels that it was when Pinball Arcade first came out. Um, no. And again, I think it just has to do with there were so many new avenues for people to discuss the game. Uh, YouTube channels, Twitch channels, uh, Twitter, Discord, Reddit. The... the the fan forum just lost its place. It couldn't keep up with the times. Yeah, it just didn't. It didn't remain relevant anymore. Yeah, like it was. It was just not really something that people needed yeah. anymore because there were easier ways of doing what they were doing on the forum. Yeah. Um, which brings yeah. us to where we are today. I mean, literally, I'll go months without reading a single thing on the fan forum and notice that barely anything's been posted. Um, yep, I you know. I haven't been on. The only reason I logged on was purely by chance. And I saw the the thread about closing the forum down. Yeah, and I was going, "Oh, what?" <laughs> like, and even <laughs> in fact, Zen was even starting. Zen wound up abandoning their own forum to come on to Digital Pinball Fans. Um, yeah, and was using it to get beta testers and uh, some behind the scenes stuff uh, that was being able to be communicated. But once they started managing their own Discord and Reddit. There was no need for us anymore, and by that point, they'd already figured out how to make actual contact with those that they needed to. Um, yeah. So the forum really just became an archive. Yeah. Which is why we're just giving you the heads up right now, because uh, there's going to be just a few days. If there's anything that you want to pull off of there, if there's anything that you want to, you know, save an archive for yourselves, do it quick. Uh, do it while yep. you can, because um, it's about to go bye bye. Uh, death to digital pinball fans. Long live digital pinball fans. <laughs> Veil digital pinball fans. Yeah. Anyway, mm. um, on to other things, which we can't really show you, unfortunately. We're going to have to save that. But new uh, pinball show came out, which basically was announcing, hey, Bright a Pinbot, that's your next table, which is a big, huge hooray. Yes. As we were talking about earlier, you know, it was one of the very first DLC that was in uh, Pinball Arcade, and now it's finally uh, coming here to to Pinball FX. Um, it comes along with uh, the remainder of Season 6 tables, which were all the alphanumerics. So it was a very appropriate pack. Um, yeah, that's very. Or, or collection that's coming out uh, this go-around. So that's also Dr. Dude, Space Station, and uh, Funhouse. Um, Jared, you've had a chance to look at uh, all these. We have a press build that we're able to look at. That's what we are not able to share with you, unfortunately. Uh, yeah, <laughs> we not can't until share it goes until live. it officially comes out. Um, wh- I'm going to save thoughts on Pim- Bread of Pimbot for the moment. Mm. Those other three tables. My initial reaction is Funhouse is dark and evil, and I love the look of it. <laughs> yeah, lighting has been well and truly revised in that table. It reminds and me of when I first ever good. saw the table. Uh, I was in college. 
I, there was this arcade I frequented. It was one of these arcades that was pretty much only lit by all the video games and mm-hmm. pinball machines in the place uh, with maybe some mild mood lighting and neon here and there. Mm-hmm. But Pin uh, 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 Funhouse sat by itself in this evil little, like this is where they had put the featured pinball machine of the mm. month, basically. And it just looked dark and menacing and this freaking... Head? Dummy head on the table it was just like what, it, and it just creeped you out the way he uh, talked and and everything. And this is the first time I've seen it now in digital form where I went, "That's what I remember." <laughs> right, that, that would have been a f- massive nostalgia trip. For oh you. man, because it's just Rudy is looking evil with the way the light is bouncing on him. Oh yeah, um, yeah. It's I'm I'm very pleased with the look. Of, of Funhouse. The other two tables basically look fairly similar to how they looked in uh, FX3. Yeah. With Dr. They, Dude they and do. Space Station. Yeah, I think Dr. Dude, maybe some of the um, like uh, light reflections have had some work done on them. Oh, sure. Um, and the particle effects the are obviously, part, you know, uh, again, doing with the particle effects that have been like with uh, uh, Monster Bash. Uh, mm. same thing, you know, where it's like yeah. a, little, a little poppier, a little crisper. Um, yeah, they look good. I did notice for me, there was, a, I mean, this is also just press preview stuff. They're probably going to fix it or it could just be my settings. But I think um, because Space Station is a darker table, I felt a bit of graininess creeping in mm. on that particular table for me. It didn't look as sharp as the others. Okay. Um, and I've I've looked at my settings in the game, and they're all they they don't have any of that motion blur stuff turned on. Okay. So maybe I don't know. Maybe it could just be that the other tables probably just so bright as well, like yeah. they're Whoa, you yeah. know. Um. So yeah, it's probably just that. Um, uh, as for Bright a Pinbot, I know both of us were excited to see what this was going to look like, and for some reason we we were both like, oh, it's going to be so shiny chrome. Mm. So when I booted it up, I went, okay, it's not as shiny chrome as I remember. But then I took mm. a closer look, at least at the table. And so this was one of the knocks of with Pinball Arcade. Uh, again, this was like their second or third DLC pack. I think it was their second DLC pack. There yeah. was so many low-res textures. Uh, and text so many that, missing polygons. Oh, yeah. Tons of missing polygons. Oh, it was so much detail missing from the table. And it was like what should be a gorgeous machine just didn't have that pop. This no. thing is gorgeous detail all over the place. The plastics look phenomenal uh, oh. on it, and the lighting is is very nice and ambient. It's accurate. It, the lighting know. is accurate, and that's what you want. Yeah, like, the insert lights are, are given a nice it. little pop because um, it is a yeah. table that has a good light show on it. It looks um, great. Yeah. yeah. Um, the other thing that stood out for me was excellent job on the enhancements, guys. Uh, very tasteful. Yeah. Um, they basically got and, a little bride wandering around on the side of the table and a phenomenal modeling of her and also mm. motion capture. I, I, I'm just imagining Deep doing all these poses. Cause I, I wonder if it was Deep doing it because... He seems to be the motion capture guy. I don't well, know. He's a gymnast if he is. is he, because he is, there's some no pretty doubt. interesting poses happening there. Um, but really, because we were wondering what was going to happen with the metamorphosis. And was it yeah. going to be affecting the playfield itself? No, the playfield doesn't get affected. But the bride on the side of the playfield gets affected. And she goes yeah. through metamorphosis. I wish she was bigger. I actually, in this case, I wish she was bigger. So let me ask you this, because I had that initial thought. And then I went, wait a second. So I turn. I had turned off Williams. Uh, they call it Williams Action Camera mode. Cam. Yeah. You turn that on, it zooms in on her, and now yeah. you can see all the details of her as she transforms. Yes, I did see that happen okay. once or twice, um, which made me want to go. I just wish I could see him more. Um, okay. Yeah, because it. Like, she's very like probably one of the best models i think they've done so far oh absolutely it looks the... really spectacular yeah um the only model on there that i went Meh, is <laughs> over on the uh the the feedback ramp the plastic ramp over on the right hand side there's an apple 
Yeah. Which mimics one of the stickers that's on that ramp. But when the ball hits the apple, it does this stupid noise that goes, bang. Yes. It doesn't fit Me too. Okay, what is this? It's... Like, uh, that was just like, what, what, what is that noise? Why is that in the game? Yeah, it's a, it's a poor choice for a noise. They could have yeah, done a just, better noise. <laughs> they just need to change. It sounds like like um, something you would see on, I don't know, um, the hurricane table or like a comedy style table. Exactly. It has a comedy theme to it. And this is not a comedy table. Yeah, it, it needs to have a science fiction sound to it, not a cartoon sound to it. Um, yeah. I don't know if Farsight or Farsight, if uh, Zen will have time to adjust or fix that or if they even care to fix that. Probably um, not. Probably not, but it's one of those. I, I don't even think they could just take it out, and I don't think anyone would miss it at all. Yeah, it's the is the only enhancement on there where I just kind of go, eh, that takes me out. All the other enhancements are great. There's a little um a pinbot up at the top who looks down, or his sc- uh, uh, visor visor mechanic basically is like a floating head, kind of does this little thing and looks down on your ball when it's up in the uh, the the feed up there. Uh, perhaps the thing that I'm most excited for that I saw in Bride. So when the ball comes down the plastic and is going to drop down into that lane, mm. Zen finally nailed what happens to the ball, where it doesn't just come and drop down immediately. No, it kind of does a little boom and then drops. Oh, yes. Yep, it does I that little round and round. want that in whitewater because that's what is supposed to happen in those instances. Um, yes. They finally yeah. nailed it. Yep. I remember, I think, Farsight, when they did a couple of these tables, they they actually put like that in as like a hard coded effect. Mm-hmm. So it actually like rattled around in the hole and then dropped, and yeah. it was like coded in, so it would do that. Um, but I think the in this case of the it does actually do a little whirlpool as it goes in. Yeah, yeah, um, it's really it's really nice. Really and nice then little feature. Physics wise, uh, mechanics uh, of how it plays, it very much feels like. The real machine. Um, I'm not noticing anything that I'm going. Well, that doesn't feel right. That doesn't seem like how the ball should be moving. Um, That's a weirdness happening up that little flip flop diverter. At oh, with the the, the the eyes. Yes. Yeah, so there, there is some. They got some work to do on the mechanics. Um, yeah, I've had just the ball a little bit of mission. up there, uh, and then magically, here's the great thing. Unlike Pimble Arcade, where you had to call an attendant. Um, <laughs> Zen just goes, wait, the ball's stuck there for five seconds. Yeah, we're just, ball disappears, pops back in the shooter lane. Unfortunately, it seems to happen when you're doing both of the eyes. You've just locked both of the eyes or get and get both the eyes, and then one disappears, and now you have to go through the whole sequence again to get it back in there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but that's why this just... is technically the beta that we're playing still. That's right. So they'll fix that. Yeah. It'll just be um, the reason being is that um, that mechanism, when you're looking at the game, has got a lot of play and a lot of looseness in it. And theirs doesn't. It feels very, very stiff mm-hmm. when the ball goes through there. Like you actually see the ball slow down quite a lot when it passes through the flip flop. So they just need to reduce the friction on that part and that'll solve the problem. But it's kind of fun actually seeing the mechanical piece of The flip flop actually happening. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's actually functioning. So. Because in and there was a it was a predetermined ball path in um, Farsight's yes. version of it. You could actually see the ball completely ignore the the actual ball path that yeah. it was supposed to go on and just settle into the hole. I um, will say that I miss uh, with Pinball Arcade. They had all the custom ball skins, and one of the ball skins was an eyeball, and so it was that was my go to ball when playing. <laughs> bright you a pin bot, so I could have two settle eyeballs in eye. settle in, settle in there. Um, I'm gonna yep. miss that not being uh, a thing for yep. that. Um, what is your thought? So apart from, I, I said, those are all positive things that Zen has done with bright a pin bot. Yep. The one thing that Zen can't do anything about with bright a pin bot is the coding. Yeah, the um, rules. The rules. Now, what is your thought about the rules, Jared? Because personally. I've always, I don't care that Bride of Pinbot isn't a tournament table. I've always viewed mm. Bride as an excellent table to, uh, it's a step up from a beginner table because there is a mm. definite progression to your shooting. 
But it, yes. that being said, yes, if all you're going for is the billions of points, it becomes a one ramp machine. Oh, it's always a one rep machine. Yeah. Um, but, and that's like, that's what that game's known for. But if you were to be learning pinball, it seems like it's a good machine to learn pinball on. There is, because when you're shooting the, you know, all the loop shots, like the one that's underneath the skill shot area Mm -hmm. that loops back to the left flipper, generally, I think the return's a bit safe at the moment. Yeah, it's very conservative. And very, very consistent, which it's not in the real game. It's quite variable. Um, which uh, for which at, return is it variable on? The right shot. Um, oh, the when right it shot comes out of the pop bumpers. No, the, the little the sneaky far right shot that you shoot into it goes and then comes back out to oh, the flipper. Oh, oh, oh. The jackpot shot, the jackpot light shot. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. That one, it depending on how hard you put the ball into that slot, it determines how fast it comes out the back end of it. Or sorry, the front end of it, if you look at from a directional perspective, um, and it it is uh, it's too safe at the moment. It'd be mm-hmm. interesting to see what folks think when it gets released because I think it's it's quite conservative. And this is on like you know the the Zen um, enhanced. No, what do we call it now? I don't even know what we call it anymore. The Zen like physics, the, the Williams physics. Well, is it, <clears> so uh, and again, I got I got to couch that. These still aren't the official Williams settings. The Williams pinball physics, flipper physics are there, but we're still dealing with Zen table settings. Yeah. Being that the flippers still have a more severe angle. Um, yeah. And the uh, hungriness of outlanes has been set to easy. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's uh, what they call liberal. If you're using uh, what they tell you in the instructions, yeah, not conservative. <laughs> it's conservative for the operator, not yeah. conservative for the player. <laughs> yeah. Um, so this is, in a lot of respects, it plays v- kind of like what the pinball arcade version plays, where it's uh, the ball is a little more wild here, but it's still yeah. fairly. Um, it's fairly predictable safe. still. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's it's safe. Yeah. Yeah. Not as wild as some of the other tables that are in the collection. Yeah. And and um, there's still, like, as we've said, um, as we're still in early access, I'm not worried that Zen doesn't have the tougher settings put in yet. Mm. Um, but once we get toward, I mean, we're mid-summer, well, the summer just started technically. Uh, let's say once we get towards the end of August, if we still haven't seen anything on that front, I think we definitely see to start uh, rattling the sabers and really uh, asking Zen, are you going to put in these other <laughs> settings? Because we would like them. Yeah. Um, but they're very much yeah, still absolutely. just introducing new things. Like uh, I believe they're about to introduce uh, custom tournaments uh user uh, user generated tournaments uh, yeah that's, so that's what was announced yeah so that's the kind of thing that they're still uh working on um, getting getting functions into the game before they start doing those little nitty bitty things that uh you know seven out of ten pinball users aren't going to care about but so it's 30 percent right. of us that are going to be screaming bloody murder if we don't get <laughs> just as you create art broad strokes first then fine strokes there you go there you yeah. go um, all right. Well, that's kind of going to be it for our time today. Uh, if you have any, uh, oh, lost Jared again. Um, if you have any, uh, thoughts, uh, memories, um, uh, all that kind of thing about digital pinball fans, please let us know, hit us up. We want to reminisce with you on, uh, on the Twitters. And next time, like I said, I think we're going to do a uh, let's play of Bride, and we'll probably do the, the just the Volume Six tables too, uh, just so you guys can uh, see them in action, in play. And beyond that, it'll be those things that uh, Jared loves to talk about so much: stuff and things. Like I said, Jared just a blue screen of death again, apparently. So that's why he's not here. But until next time, folks, catch you later.